Hello everyone, this is a tutorial on how to create cyanotype photographs using cyanotype paper. In this tutorial I'll show you how I took this picture of a rooster statue. The cyanotype process is a very old photographic printing process. It was invented in 1842. As you can see in this image, um, the prints are a beautiful deep cyan blue. That's why it's called cyanotype. This particular image was created by Anna Atkins, and this is a photogram, meaning that she placed objects on the light-sensitive paper and then put it outside and exposed it to create these um, silhouettes. I did the same thing. I put these objects on some light-sensitive paper, and when you remove them, you can see how parts of the paper were exposed and parts weren't. The white parts are unexposed, and the blue parts are exposed. So what type of paper is this? I use sun art paper. I know most people make their own cyanotype paper by painting chemicals on it, but <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'm really cheap. I go out to Hobby Lobby and buy the cheap stuff, but it works for me. It comes in this light tight envelope, which is pretty nifty. Um, now most people create their images in cyanotype either by photogram or by having a printed out negative on an acetate sheet and using a contact printing method outside in the sun to create their images. I decided to try to use the paper as film directly in a camera. So I used this Nikon 35mm film camera um, to take some pictures. As you can see, it has a very large aperture. This is a 1.8 f-stop, and so a lot of light enters and goes onto the paper. And that's because the paper is very, it's, it's not sensitive at all to the light, and so even with that large opening, it requires about a three-hour exposure to get an image to register. So not very convenient, but... So in order for me to put this paper as film into this camera, I go into a dark room so that the light does not expose the paper. It's not, you know, extremely dark because the paper isn't very sensitive, so it's okay to use the paper in this dim light. Um, one side's blue, as you can see, and one side's white. The blue side is the light-sensitive side, and the white side is just the plain paper side. I have this small template. I don't know if you can see it. There's a small paper strip that I hold up to the paper so that I know exactly the size of the paper that I need to cut out to put into the camera. And already you can see that this image is going to be very small. It's 35 millimeters, so it's a very small image that's going to be blown up large on a scanner to be seen. Um, now that I have the paper cut out, I open the camera up and place the paper on that square that you see. That's exactly where the image is going to be projected onto the paper. You have to make sure and very carefully place that paper directly in the center of that square so that none of the image gets cut off because that would be the last thing you want to do. So now that that's in the camera we're ready to go shoot our scene and here we have our rooster statue outside against my favorite stucco wall that I love to take pictures against and I have the camera on a tripod facing the image the rooster and I have this bulb on the end of the camera which allows me to keep the shutter down for three hours while the picture is being taken. So while that's happening I prepare the developing solution which is very easy it's just simple tap water um, no other chemicals really involved but I like to add a little vinegar to the developing solution which helps tone the picture and darken it a little bit. Um, lemon juice also works but uh, plain water also works but vinegar adds a nice tone to the image. Now three hours have passed. As you can see, the sun has created a shadow on the scene. Um, that's fine. Adds some nice um, even tone to the picture in the end. And now I twist this little knob on the end of the bulb and that shuts the shutter and stops the exposure. Now cyanotype is a really neat process because it's a, um, it's a printing out process, which means that the picture is actually visible. You can see it there, directly out of the camera, on the paper. The picture is on the paper. It's not a latent image like most photo processes. So once I place this in the vinegar water, you can see how it very quickly transforms. The 
unexposed parts of the image wash away, they dissolve into the water, and then the exposed parts stay and form a light Prussian blue pigment. And then you can rinse this image in the in the sink for you know five minutes or so to make sure all the unexposed particles are washed away. Now what I discovered is with these very small 35 millimeter size images I need to you know rub them back and forth on an edge like this on this countertop that way as it dries no wrinkles form. If you just let this paper sit out and dry naturally wrinkles will form and it'll show up looking really ugly in the final picture. So I rub this all the way until it's completely dry on the table to get rid of all, to make the picture very smooth so there's no wrinkles. And later in this video I'll show you some images that didn't turn out because I did not you know, rub them on the edge of the table here. So now on the left, you see I have a dark picture I've taken before a few weeks ago and on the right is the picture I just took of the rooster and you can see the rooster picture is a lot lighter than the image on the left and that's because it's not done developing yet it's not it hasn't oxidized and reacted with the air to produce that darker Prussian blue so a lot of people use um, hydrogen peroxide to oxidize the image but I choose to let it oxidize naturally for several hours in the air so after a couple hours you can see it's a little bit darker, it's hard to see in this image. And so now it's ready to be pressed under some books. If I press it earlier, the oxygen can't really react and it doesn't darken. And finally, after it's pressed, I get to the modern part of the process. I put the negative on the scanner and cover it of course with my trusty 882 and a half questions and answers Titanic book and place some glue on it to hold it down a little bit heavy and take the scan. And in the computer this is what the final image looks like. And as you can see it's flipped backwards from what it was. That's because um, naturally the images flip upside down and you know crosswise. So I've just, I in the computer I flip it the other way. There we go. But still you can see that the shadow behind the rooster is white and the lighter parts in the image are darker blue. That's because this image is a negative, so I have to flip light and dark so that the image is, looks right, so the shadow is darker. There we go. And in that process, the blue color is also flipped opposite. And the opposite color of that cyan blue is this sepia color, which I like and so I keep. And it's just naturally the opposite color and it looks pretty nice to me. Now, here's some examples of these 35 millimeter prints that I did not smooth out. You can see this is a picture of some logs and it's a little bit bumpy. It doesn't look very nice. Here's a picture of a hill in my backyard. You can see fingerprints on it. It's very sensitive to fingerprints. Um, here's some other negatives I took. Here's a wagon um, and here's the flipped positive image scanned into the computer. Um, here's a chair and that's the flipped positive image. So these are all very small images that are being blown up. There's some creepy dolls. This one didn't turn out so well because it was done later in the day and there wasn't as much light. Um, here's a wicker vase with some flowers in it. These are scanned at a pretty high resolution, 1200 dpi. So every detail is apparent, even the wrinkles in the paper. Here's a doll that's posing next to a chair. It's kind of scary looking. Um, now this image is pretty interesting. This is a lighthouse with some buckets and baskets next to it. This is the 35 millimeter version. I also took a larger format picture. Here's like a 4 by 5 inch negative of the same scene but using a different camera. But the picture is pretty blurry as you can see in the positive flipped image. This was a homemade camera I made a year or so ago to take glow-in-the-dark pictures, not cyanotypes. This is the camera here. You can see it's made out of a cardboard box that's been spray-painted black. It has a magnifying glass for a lens. And the box fits the focal length of the lens. And you can see there's a glass plate in the back that's coated with glow-in-the-dark paint. And I use that camera to take pictures on the the plate, so in a dark room, an image would glow. There's a picture of my dad in glow in the dark. It was a 10 second exposure, so it wasn't so bad. Here's um, another cyanotype taken with that camera, the wagon. It's blurry also. 
Here's looking off my back deck. It's pretty blurry, but very impressionistic. And here's a very blurry view looking across my street to the house across the street. I also used another camera. I tried to use another camera. This is an old 1930s Kodak camera. And I it's a larger format camera, so it doesn't have the small grain in the 35 millimeter images. But the drawback is the the aperture is so small it only goes up to an f11 stop and so the exposures are incredibly long they're seven or eight hours long to get a good picture so i took a couple images this one is a view outside my back yard it's a three hour exposure it, incredible detail but the image is just so dark this is looking out at some trees and weeds in my backyard you can see there's the rooster in the front very detailed but still now this, this one's also very interesting. It's another view off my back deck. It's beautiful, but it's very dark. It's very detailed and dark. It's interesting because you can see the rooster uh, superimposed over the chimney because um, I tried to take this pic a picture of the rooster outside, but it started to snow, and so I took everything inside and the and I put it in the window to try to take a picture for seven hours and the rooster from the first time it was outside is still in the picture. So, wow, I'm sorry, that was a mouthful. Uh, thank you for watching. That's how I like to take <laughs> pictures at home. So if you want to give this a shot, uh, let me know and let, show me your pictures if, um, if you end up trying this process out and if you can think of easier ways to get even sharper pictures, I'd appreciate it. So uh, thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to hearing your comments. Bye.